It's the Real News Network. I'm Greg Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. Newly released documents show that Virginia's largest public university, George Mason University, granted the Charles Koch Foundation a key role in the hiring and firing of professors in exchange for millions of dollars in donations. George Mason University is among the largest recipients of Koch donations. George Mason University president, Angel Cabrera, has long denied a quid pro quo for the donations, but had to reserve, reverse himself last week when the documents were released, issuing a statement that agreements with the Koch Foundation, quote, fall short of the standards of academic independence I expect any gift to meet, unquote. Joining me to analyze the ties between the Koch brothers and universities is Bill Black. Bill is a white collar criminologist, former financial regulator and associate professor of economics and law at the University of Missouri, Kansas, Kansas City. He's also the author of the book, The Best Way to Rob a Bank is to Own One. Thanks for joining us again, Bill. Thank you. So first, what can you tell us about the legality of a public university accepting donations under conditions that in effect restrict academic freedom? Specifically, should GMU President Angel Cabrera fear any uh, legal consequences of this re revelation? None at all. Um, but it is a violation of uh, accreditation standards. Uh, and as a result, uh, George Mason University, were there ever a vigorous uh, in the periodic inspections uh, that they have for certification, um, if there were a vigorous inquiry, he could face some questions, but none of that could uh, send him to jail or lose him his job. So well, apparently the Koch Foundation is donating tens of millions of dollars to hundreds of universities every year. Also, this is not the first time that it was discovered that the donations were tied to specific conditions. There were several other cases. What do we know about the Koch Foundation agenda in making these kinds of donations? So uh, first, this goes back as an organized program to 1971, when Lewis Powell wrote his famous memorandum, sometimes called Manifesto, to the Chamber of Commerce that said, look, uh, the left is at war uh, with corporate interests, and uh, we are the ones that fund uh, corp uh, you know, the, the left. Uh, because they're mostly in the universities and um, news programs and such. And we own those things, uh, or we're the principal donors uh, to those things. Um, and we should take back uh, control. And uh, we should make sure uh, that uh, the dominant uh, viewpoint uh, taught in universities and on uh, television programs uh, is uh, very, very pro-business, uh, pro pro-CEO type stuff. And his principal villain in this memorandum was Ralph Nader, uh, because Ralph Nader, and he's quite, uh, Lewis Powell was quite explicit about this, that uh, Ralph Nader was the great danger because he wanted to put corporate criminals in prison. And of course, that's the real concern out there. Uh, a few months later, Lewis Powell was made appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court and uh, was mixed on social type issues, but on corporate power issues was very strong and created the antecedents that led to Citizens United and this uh, rise of absolute corporate uh, dominance in uh, fundraising. So that's the general scoop. Koch brothers, um, as you said, it's actually the leading place to give to is George Mason University. And so first, uh, full disclosure, uh, my spouse, June Carbone, was a professor at George Mason Law School during the period when it was taken over by the uh, ultra-conservative uh, folks uh, and eventually left to that uh, uh, under pleasant circumstances, not a violation. And I interviewed for a position once at uh, George Mason University in law school and did not get it. And that too is a hilarious story for another time. Uh, but anyway, with those disclosures uh, out there, uh, George Mason uh, is uh, known for its dedication to the most extreme um, uh, pro, uh, well, it's actually anti-government, anti-democracy, um, 
pro business CEO should be able to do uh, whatever they want, uh, basically. So um, roughly half of the Coke money to educational institutions uh, has gone to George Mason University because it's located in Washington, D.C., and because their goal is to get these people on the courts uh, first uh, through judicial clerkships and then by appointing the judges and because they want to get them into the government uh, in particular in high level positions. And George Mason faculty, former faculty on leave are uh, occupying a number of key positions in the Trump administration. But the Kochs don't do this alone. The Olin Foundation created all over America, the most elite universities to many not elite universities, Olin fellows in law and economics, and uh, almost invariably picked really extreme uh, uh, right-wing uh, folks uh, there. And then there's this odd entity, bb &T, uh, which is a, a very large regional bank, uh, most associated with the Southeast and Florida in particular, that uh, the crusade of that CEO, he was an Ayn Rand devotee. And so he usually works in conjunction with the Cokes, as he did at George Mason uh, University. And uh, BB&T uh, is given at least, I think it's uh, over 70 uh, colleges money, and they have to agree to teach Ayn Rand. And a number of the agreements require that the professors share an objectivist uh, mindset and be pro that view. So it's just grotesque, obvious um, violations of independent standards. Now, here's the things that have uh, they have in common that we are only learning through the disclosure of these documents. First, these deals are always done in secret. Second, they create entities with uh, as cutouts, like you do in money laundering, uh, to hide uh, who is making the donation. Third, the senior administration, uh, by which I mean the, t the heads of universities, lie consistently. Uh, and claim that uh, these documents don't say what they say, uh, when they obviously do say what they say, but they're kept from disclosure. Fourth, really interesting, these deals involve, in essence, a bribe. And the bribe is this. For example, at George Mason, the dean of the law school, an ultra, ultra right-wing uh, guy, Henry Butler, was deemed a critical person to the whole operation, and therefore he couldn't be fired without the approval of the Kochs, and the Kochs delegated their authority to the Federalist Society, which is the ultra-white ring uh, uh, law, judge and uh, uh, law prof and lawyer uh, association, right? So the, 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 and, and again, they did this through cutouts to keep it secret. Um, but you can see this is the guy on one side of the deal, Henry Butler, largely uh, negotiating the deal. And he gets out of it, basically, uh, you can't be fired. <laughs> in, in Florida State University, where BB&T took the lead in the negotiations, the guy that was the negotiating for the university, supposedly, <laughs> got a huge raise. <laughs> And that, too, was decreed uh, a critical component of the contract in all of these things. So they buy off these folks. So it's a it's a violation of academic independence on so many different levels. Now, here's the bigger key, though, and it's being missed in things like the Washington Post article that has just come out about it that is otherwise quite good. The, the thing that it, uh, isn't coming across in press accounts is it isn't so much, I mean, it's horrible what they do that allow um, the Koch brothers to actually have a vote on uh, whether somebody gets hired and whether they get retained. Uh, but, you know, the defense there is they only get 40% of the votes, <laughs> which is preposterous. But far larger is this. 
the deal documents allow the Koch brothers and BBT to withdraw all future money with, and there's no standard required. It's in their absolute discretion. So guess what's going to happen? Can you plan an educational program if you don't know whether your money might be yanked on literally one second notice for absolutely no reason, right? No meritorious reason? Of course you can't. So what does this do? It creates total power, total leverage. And remember, the folks negotiating these deals are economists who know game theory. Well, in game theoretic terms, you've just given Coke, you've given BB&T absolute power because they can destroy your academic program literally in a blink of the eye for no reason they have to state. It's their absolute discretion to remove those funds. In other words, they have total power. You don't dare piss them off. Okay, well, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there for now. Uh, thanks so much, Bill, to give us an uh, update and analysis of this issue. I'm speaking to Bill Black, Associate Professor of Economics and Law at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. Thanks again, Bill, for having joined us today. Thank you. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.